Good evening, everyone. I'm Ben Howell, and this year I'm chairing our church's leadership council. So just want to say welcome. We're so glad you're here uh, for this evening session uh, to talk about student ministry at our church, the vital ministry at our church. And uh, we're going to have a presentation from Autumn and Michael. Uh, they're going to give us sort of a lay of the land on where things currently are and uh, some of their thoughts on where uh, student ministry could be going. And then we're going to have a discussion as a larger group uh, about the vision for uh, student ministry into the future. And then we'll wrap it up uh, and we'll, we'll go uh, toward the future from there. So why are we here tonight? Uh, we're here to help our church's ministries respond to God's call. And we want your help to do that. We see these sessions as an opportunity uh, to inform our church family about our vital ministries and to gain feedback from everyone joining us tonight about the ministry's future and to encourage you uh, and ask you to join us in shepherding uh, the ministry's resurgence into the new normal as we emerge from the pandemic. So our desired outcomes for this evening uh, is an opportunity to gather feedback from all who are joining us uh, to get down to what matters within the ministry, not just the program itself, but what matters uh, in the meaning of the ministry. And uh, to get buy-in uh, for where we're going, um, to have leaders and volunteers uh, excited uh, and uh, inspired about where uh, we see, or where we as a collective group uh, see uh, student ministry going into the future. So to get things going, uh, I was hoping you'd join me uh, in a time of prayer. So if you'd pray with me, please. Creator God, thank you for today. Thank you for uh, the opportunity for us to come together uh, as members of our church family to talk about uh, your ministry among students in our community. God, please be with us during this time and give us wisdom and give us um, ideas and give us courage to speak up when we have something on our mind or on our heart. Uh, please help our voices be heard. And God, please um, guide us and direct us during this time so that uh, this ministry will glorify you and help bring your kingdom here on earth. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to um, Michael uh, and Autumn, and uh, they can uh, guide us through this next part. Take it away, Autumn. All right. Uh, basically, I'm just going to be talking about some of the different aspects of that are involved in our in our youth ministry and kind of what they're looking like right now, you know, amidst coronavirus and all the crazy stuff that we've got going on. Um, so the kind of the main thing that we have is, is our Sunday night worship. Um, so right now we're doing those on live stream on Instagram, YouTube, all the places where you can watch live stream. Um, we're streaming them every single week ever since lockdown started. Um, this this Sunday night worship is actually led by a youth worship team, actually led by Lily Stride, who's in this meeting. Hey, girl. Um, she coordinates the youth that come play in the band, and she sings with the band, and she coordinates all the music. It's all student-led, um, which has been super-duper helpful in actually getting new students to come join Elevate because people want to be in the worship band. Um, and so we're able to get more students because of that, which is which is super, super great, even in the midst of the pandemic. Um, there's pretty good viewership every week. We get, like across the entire week, we get about the same amount of viewership as there would be physical students at Elevate if Elevate was meeting in person. Um, not everyone watches on Sunday nights though. Um, what's great about this is that you can watch the live stream later on in the week. So if a Sunday night doesn't work for a certain kid or a certain family, 
um, we have some families who maybe on like a Wednesday will have dinner together and then they'll watch the, the replay of the live stream from, from Sunday. And so that's a great way for kids to get involved and elevate, even if Sunday night isn't really the best night for them. Um, so it's been really, really great. We have guest preachers. Michael does some uh, messages sometimes, and then we try to make it interactive by, you know, doing like video challenges or like interactive games through our social medias and stuff, um, just to kind of get the kids engaged and keep it from being just a watch this video thing and then go about the rest of your week. We kind of try to keep them engaged um, with all of that. So that's kind of where we're at with worship right now. It's been going super well. The live streams are going well. The youth um, led band is going super well. So we're doing great in that department. Um, next, Encounter. Encounter is actually happening this weekend. It's looking a little bit different than normal. Normally, you know, we'd go to Camp Warren Willis for the weekend and we'd stay there, but that can't happen right now. Um, so we're going to base this year's encounter kind of off of the model that we did for the Christmas Eve candlelight services, where we met in people's front yards um, in small groups of like 10, 15 people. Um, there's going to be speakers. Um, Michael and Dr. John are both going to be speaking throughout the weekend via YouTube, I believe. Is that right, YouTube, Michael? Yes, correct. Okay, they're going to be speaking um, through YouTube throughout the weekend. Um, there's also going to be small groups, which are super, super fun. What's interesting about the small groups at Encounter um, are that they are mixed across gender and grades. So we have like sixth grade boys and 10th grade girls and eighth grade girls and ninth grade boys. We have in one small group, which is not something that gets to happen a lot in the youth ministry, uh, at least like in regular Elevate. So Encounter is um, just a great opportunity to kind of meet people from all over. Um, so that's what I really like about the small groups at, at Encounter. Uh, they're a great way to mingle with new people and they um, to get kind of get new perspective on what we're learning about, what we're talking about, what the lesson is. Um, we are going to be doing our color war, which if you don't know what the color war is, basically we just throw a bunch of paint at each other and it's fun. Um, <laughs> usually we try to make it like a game where like there's certain rules and you have to do certain things, but it never goes like that. We just, we have powdered paint, we have liquid paint filled in water balloons. We just throw it at each other. It's a fun time. So we're going to have a version of that um, at our unique encounter experience this year. So I'm really excited about it. I'm signed up to be a leader at Encounter. Um, so I'm going to be participating in that as well. Um, so I'm super excited about that. So that's kind of where we're at with Encounter. I think I hit all of my points that I was supposed to hit on that. Um, so confirmation. Um, confirmation is happening in person this year. Um, it, of course, we have masks and physical distancing and all that stuff. Um, but it is in person. Um, there are 17 students in total. Um, and then there's two groups. There's one that meets in the morning and one that meets in the evening. So that's not just 17 people all together. Um, so we're trying to keep it as safe as possible, but they are still able to meet in person to really get the full confirmation experience. Um, there's three adult leaders for these 17 students. And there's also one student leader. Um, who was in Michael's first confirmation class, which is just a fun tidbit that he told me to say. So just thought I would share. Um, so he's come full circle, but um, so there's a student leader, three adults and 17 students. So the turnout for um, confirmation has been really, really good. Um, there is going to be retreat this year. It's looking like it's gonna be a lock-in. They're gonna plan that um, after encounter has, has come and gone. Um, just because, you know, this is a new thing for Encounter this year, so it's a lot to plan this new Encounter and then also the, the retreat at the same time. Um, but Confirmation has been super successful this year, and I know a couple of girls in a small group that I lead are in Confirmation, and they really, really love it. Um, so they've been having a really good time with that. Am I going super fast? Am I going too fast? Is everyone okay? This okay. is great. You're doing awesome, Autumn. Perfect. Um, and then connect groups. I love connect groups. I lead one. Yay. Um, so connect groups are happening in person. 
Um, I know there's a couple people who will, will zoom in or FaceTime into their connect groups, for, but for the most part, um, they're in person. Um, most or three of the four groups, I believe, meet um, in the backyards of host homes um, and we're physically distant with masks, all that stuff. And then one group meets at a Panera. Um, but we all wear masks, we're physically distant, we're outdoors, and we get to meet in person, which is super duper fun. Um, there's four groups in total. So we have middle school girls, which I lead. We have, I believe, and then it's high school girls, middle school boys, high school boys. So we've got four groups in total. Um, and I love, I love my connect group. Um, I've I started leading a sixth grade connect group when I was a senior in high school, I believe. So that was like three years ago. Um, but I've been able to continue doing that each year. Um, it's just a really awesome way for the kids to come together in the middle of the week, get a break from school, get a break from their stress. We talk a little bit about God. We do a little Bible study. Um, and then, of course, it's mostly just chatting, especially with the middle school girls. They love to chat. So it's just, it's, it is what it is. It's a connect group and it's a way for them to connect not only with God, but with other girls, their age or other people, their age, depending on what group it is. Um, I really love it. It has taught me how to be a leader. Um, and it has, I think it has really made an impact on the girls, at least from my experience. So I think the connect groups are super important. Um, also, I have a student leader um, helping me lead the Bible or the Connect Group Bible study. Her name is Meredith Hadala. She, I believe, is a junior in high school. I want to, okay, Lily's shaking her head. Yes. So she's a junior in high school. I couldn't remember if she was a junior or a senior. Um, but she has been absolutely killing the game. Um, she has become such a great leader because of this. So not only are the Connect Groups good for the kids who are in them, but um, for the student leaders, they really help them to grow in their leadership skills. I know one thing that I love is that when the kids start to talk and like get off topic, I'm right there with them. I do the same thing. Um, but Meredith is really good about being like, hey, let's stay on topic. Let's get through this and then we can have like fun time. And she's, she's super great. Um, so connect groups are good all around, not just for the students, but also for the leaders and literally everyone involved. It's super great. Um, so I really, really do love that we get to meet in person and not on Zoom. We, um, I know my group has one girl that that FaceTimes in every week, um, and we try to include her the best we can, but it's been a blessing to be able to actually do it in person, which is not something that, you know, I thought would be possible with coronavirus, but we're doing it. We're outside. We're six feet apart. So yeah, the connect groups are super, super great, and I love them, and that is what I have today. Autumn, thank you so much for sharing all that stuff. You're uh, Laura, would you share about Family Council and how um, student ministry is led? Sure, happy to do it. Autumn, you're a legend. That was awesome. A legend. Uh, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I think in a lot of churches, student ministry can get a little siloed. I think it's easy for it to sort of pop into uh, its own category and they're doing their thing and we're like, what's a color war? I don't know, goodbye. Um, and family ministry and Michael, and I think the youth as well work really hard to make sure that doesn't happen at our church. Um, part of that is family ministry, connecting children's and student ministry together. A lot of that is through encouraging the fifth graders to get connected through news crew, and then also introducing them to, of course, Michael and Elevate programming in general. Um, there's a lot of collaboration between Rick and Michael. And that collaboration is generally run through family council. We talk about calendaring and what we want. I, we call it, a, I think a ministry roadmap. It's what it looks like if from baptism to graduating college, you know, and hopefully beyond people stay involved, but we wanna know kind of what every step looks like so that as children are growing up in our church, they know what they're looking forward to and they know what they've got coming when they get to student ministries. Um, I think in terms of connectivity, we also try to connect the lay people to the staff in both directions. I know that running um, a student ministry is definitely a full-time job plus bonus time. And uh, it takes a large team of people to make that work. So we're hopefully able to help get volunteers, experts in certain areas. I know we had somebody helping with curriculum for confirmation. Um, we just get people who can 
kind of tag in and use their spiritual gifts. And then also hopefully give um, the people of the church an opportunity to talk about what's important to them and kind of like what we're doing tonight really and get those voices heard and um, passed on to the staff. Um, so yeah, I think that's most of it. Uh, we try to generally have about a half and half makeup of staff and lay people and make sure that everybody feels equally heard. Um, it's a really fun group to be a part of. And there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Usually small groups kind of branch off when people are passionate about something like Sunday mornings or Sunday nights. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty great. Thank you, Laura. I Before uh, Emily shares about the student leadership team, I just wanted to really shine a spotlight Confirmation is a really like logistical and detail and administratively heavy program. And it's that's um, God's given me lots of gifts and abilities. And that's the one that like he kind of took that space out so that like I could be better at like, I don't know, interpretive dancing or something. Um, and so I was really able to tap into the gifts and abilities of the people on the council to accomplish the administrative behemoth that is confirmation. So uh, really, really grateful for that late leadership and that support. So um, would would not have happened without uh, family council. Um, so yeah, Emily, would you be able to share how student ministries also led kind of more into the nitty gritty and the detail um, yeah. with our student leadership team? Okay, so the student leadership team uh, is basically a bunch of students who work to plan, help plan at least, a lot of Elevates events like Encounter, and um, ECHO at the beginning of the year. Um, it's integral to the uh, Elevate identity because it really helps connect uh, the students with what, the, what their peers will be doing in um, Elevate. So it kind of adds to like, it's not all um, just done by adults. It's kind of the kids help too. Um, but it's definitely helped uh, create and foster the Elevate identity. And I think that's, uh, <laughs> A good thing. Um, <laughs> um, so basically the leadership team makes, um, sorry, the leadership team helps make uh, major projects, plan major events, um, and provide general oversight uh, just into the everyday workings of Elevate. Um, it's also helped create a lot of uh, offshoot programs like bodybuilders, which helps get people involved in the mornings with volunteering with the kids. It kind of organizes how um, students can help then too, not just at Elevate. Thank you, Emily. I really appreciate that. And um, Emily, do you remember how you got on the team? Do you remember the process of getting onto the student leadership team? Yeah, I um, filled out a couple forms and kind of just sent that in and I yep. guess it was chosen <laughs> yeah so yeah thank you emily yeah we have a application process and uh we have students that are um uh in middle school into high school um that fill out an application that talk about priorities that um you know uh, show that they want to make leading student ministry a priority um and so uh we're able to kind of you know make sure that the right people are on the team which is really really great and one of the major projects that they accomplished earlier this year was to come up with um, a, uh, or to vote on and, and kind of fine tune the Elevate identity, which is Elevate is a place where we can grow in God's grace, share adventures, welcome everyone, and are always rooted in the word of God. Um, and so that's just, you know, a phrase that helps guide what, what we do is Elevate, um, and it's really uh, important for uh, student ministry. Before we go into talking about what's going to happen in the future, I wanted to just take a pause real quick and see if there's any questions or thoughts on what uh, these wonderful leaders have already shared about. Uh, Michael, I appreciate uh, your sharing and thank you so much, Emily and uh, Autumn and uh, Laura for your sharing. Could you, could you talk for a minute about, I know it kind of falls under another ministry of impact and um, also a little bit where confirmation goes after confirmation in terms of hooking them into, into the mainstream. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, Alex wanted to be here. He's um, He might actually be um, joining later on, um, but I believe he's at a concert uh, with uh, the Edgewater Choir. Um, but yeah, uh, Impact is, uh, you know, a central part to uh, student ministry at our church. Like David said, it's a part of music ministry. It's not, you know, necessarily a program that um, Elevate puts on. Um, but this is a great opportunity for our students to go into the world and serve um, in a meaningful way through the choir tour. And then it's a, a chance for them to serve their church community as well. And so um, constantly trying to find new ways to interact with Impact and connect with them and um, make sure that they know that Elevate is for them uh, as well. So Impact is, is a great ministry that we have at this church. And then David, what was the second thing that you asked me? impact and how, how you are working to confirmation kids and confirmation into you know yeah the main ministry so so hooking confirmation uh students in is something that we start in the fall um like autumn said a lot of her uh connect group that meets on two or monday nights uh is a part of confirmation a large chunk of the middle school guys group that i help lead with camp priest happens on wednesday night and a large chunk of them are also in confirmation. And so we try and lay the groundwork with connect groups as early as possible. And so now this year, confirmation is something added on uh, to a connection that's already there. Um, and so those students have that connection with um, you know, uh, adult leaders inside the church, younger people, as well as uh, with, with me uh, through both confirmation and connect groups. So that's the strategy this year. Because that is always a, you know, a tough, a tough nut to crack. It's never super duper easy uh, to connect our larger confirmation class into the life of student ministry. And we want to change that by connecting with them even before confirmation begins. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I see something in the chat. Uh, student leaders did an awesome job. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Dr. Sarah. And then uh, Brooke and uh, Antonina, um, is there still an opportunity for students to get involved with the band? Absolutely. And Lily Stride will take your information to make sure that you get connected. Lily is never uh, not hurting for more musicians to be a part of our team. So, um, but I, and I do say this, Lily is an incredible recruiter. Um, it's kind of like, um, like my mom used to go like thrift store shopping and she would like come and like the back of the car would just be filled with the most eclectic things that no one wanted. Uh, Lily does that, but she brings in students that everyone wants, uh, just an eclectic grouping of great musicians. And so she has a real great skill that I'm grateful for. So looking towards the future, um, one of the things that came out of the leadership of our student leadership team, our student leaders, is the desire to return to campus. Um, a lot of our students are going to church, going to school in person. A lot of our students are still attending school completely online, and even more of our students are doing a hybrid of both. And so we want to find a way that we can return to campus, much like what we're doing on Sunday mornings, in a safe and effective way. Our hope is to start that right after Encounter this weekend, so start it um, in the first Sunday of March. Uh, the plan is to have adult volunteers there to help uh, take temperatures, check in, ensure that we have sufficient contact tracing, um, and then also start, you know, thinking of ways that we can make worship in person just as effective and meaningful as it is online. It's the same situation that we went through uh, when we started gathering back together on campus for worship. Um, and so just trying to find a way to make sure that Elevate that happens on campus is number one, safe, and number two, effective and meaningful for everyone that attends. Our confirmation lock-in is gonna be happening at the end of March. Um, that'll be a Friday night event uh, with students where we're going to play games, sleep very little, eat you know, uh, Domino's or Pizza Hut pizza. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, sleep very little. So um, your prayers are, are welcome. And I wouldn't answer a phone call from me the week or two beforehand, because you know what I'm gonna be asking you to do. So just be forewarned. Um, you see there that we have our mission trips and summer camp with a question mark. Um, we, we just don't know if it's going to be safe and effective for us to be doing mission trips. Um, our number one mission trip is Seoul or SS Mission. It's our local mission trip. We 
uh, stay at our Reeves campus and we go all throughout Orlando interacting with people that are experiencing um, homelessness or uh, uh, poverty in some, some sense. And we support and serve organizations all throughout Orlando. A lot of those organizations um, are not uh, welcoming um, volunteers at all. Um, some are welcoming one or two in very sparse uh, situations. And so it'd be pretty difficult to make an effective mission trip. And, and then obviously traveling out of the country would be a very difficult uh, thing to do. Summer camp, Warren Willis is uh, taking every precaution to ensure that camp is, um, like I said, effective and safe. Um, and so we're still, we're gonna be talking with family council and student leadership team to make a decision on um, whether or not we wanna really encourage our students to be a part of uh, summer camp this year. I know that some of our families have been decreated by God, uh, which was earlier this year. Um, they talk, they sang the praises of, of camp, talking about how very safe uh, everyone felt throughout the whole time. Um, but we just want to make sure that we're able to uh, have as much overlap on the Venn diagram between effective and safe. You know, we can make everything perfectly safe, but it may not be fun, interactive, memory building, these things that are important for us. Um, but it's but it's really, really important that we wanna make sure um, that, that summer camps are both effective and uh, uh, safe. And then lastly, there is no question mark behind ECHO because I am a positive thinker and we're gonna be back to normal come August. We're gonna be, I'm, I'm not gonna wear a mask on Halloween. Um, it's gonna be completely normal and everything's gonna be great by the first week of school in August. So that's, that's how we're looking towards the future. Um, I want to take a pause here and, and see if there's any questions or thoughts about what's ahead. Yes, Autumn Day. Um, uh, my, my question is just um, for the lock-in, like how are you doing that with COVID precautions and everything? I'm just curious. I'm not yeah. judging. <laughs> No, no, no. So, uh, no, I appreciate that. So, um, we'll we'll be relying on great minds like Matt Kuzma, um, and then also I'll be relying on uh, yeah, exactly, Matt. Um, uh, but then also relying on great minds like at Warren Willis to find ways that kids can be sleeping and also being safe, and we're going to be really well spaced out, and and all of those precautions, and then hand washing stations, hand sanitizer. Um, I might wake up in the middle of the night and fog them down with, um, I'm, I'm kidding. I won't, I won't do that. So. You should. Just kidding. Yeah. Thank you, Autumn. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Any other thoughts or questions about looking towards the future? Okay. So I wanted to uh, have a little uh, discussion next. Um, before we head into visioning discussion, I just think it's meaningful for us to be thinking um, both uh, with, with our memories and with um, you know, some creativity. What is student ministry to you? Or what was student ministry to you? If you're a student now, what is it to you? Um, and then um, if you have graduated from student ministry, what was it to you? Lily. Uh, student ministry for me personally is just like, the fostering of relationships and it's tied to faith and we grow in our faith and whether that be in the church or be in something else kind of using our own gifts and using each other's strengths to build each other up and kind of foster this loving family yeah thank you well so what is student ministry to you and what was student ministry to you when you were a student autumn for me, student ministry, kind of the same, uh, as Lily said, it's kind of, it fosters like really, really important relationships. Um, but I think it's also um, just a really important first step in faith. I think a lot of times, you know, you can bring your kids to adult church and it's fine, but you know, they don't get it. So it's a place where they can feel special, feel wanted, feel like they're meant to be there, um, as well as an introduction to kind of God and faith and what he's all about. Um, I know for me, like after joining student ministry, I was like, wow, this is the best. It's, it's so, it brings you so much joy. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really good first step for just kind of getting an introduction to Jesus, 
who he is, what he did, um, how he impacts our life, um, while also kind of giving us new relationships that we otherwise wouldn't have. Yeah. Michael, this is bad. I, I guess one thing that I, I echo what Lily said. Hey, uh, Emily Devane, you guys are unmuted. Just FYI. Oh, crap. <laughs> what were you saying, Ben? In addition to what uh, Lily and Auden had to say, which I agree with all that, I, I think one thing that student ministry meant to me is is that uh, when I was a student the church you know it was the the church valued who I was or who who, my, who I I was and who my peers were at that time in my life uh, that they had this ministry for us it just showed the value that the church uh, holds for students yeah I'd echo that, Ben. I mean, on top of that, for me, it was a place where I was accepted. But it, and one of the ways that that happened was uh, not only places where I could gather with friends, but there were some adults that modeled for me kind of what this faith thing could look like. You know, I had a hard time trying to figure out how to become an adult and how does my faith go with me? And so they not only invested in my life enough that they I mattered because they invested in my life but they also were a model for me and so I think part of yeah. youth ministry is a safe place that you can kind of work it out in a practical way yeah 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 autumn um uh, that actually reminded me of something else um uh, something that youth ministry did for me that I know it continues to do for a lot of youth and did for many people who are like my age and older uh, it kind of helped me to foster like my gifts and abilities it helped me to determine mm -hmm. what I was good at and not only like what I was good at but how I could use that in a god-honoring way like I didn't really know I was you know good at leadership um, before I went to elevate but um, starting to elevate and then you know, people saw something in me. I know Michael saw something in me and he asked me to, you know, start to be a leader and things and stuff like that. And the same with like um, the old assistant youth directors, you know, they would, they saw something in me and they asked me to be a leader. And I took a leap of faith and I was like, sure, why not? I got nothing else to do. Um, but it ended <laughs> up um, <laughs> helping me to just kind of um, hone my skills. Now I, I feel like I'm a pretty solid, decent leader. Um, for youth as well as just in general um, and I and I'm thankful to elevate um, because like that's not something I think I would have ever discovered in myself if if it wasn't for those leaders seeing something in me and seeing a way that I could use that to honor God um, and then trusting me with those things so that that's something that is important about student ministry I think thank you Autumn I appreciate that I for me, um, the the one little anecdote that I point to is, um, I think I was like in seventh grade and we had a rummage sale because uh, our, our student ministry was always trying to find some money. Like we were just, we were washing cars. We were, we, we were just trying to, you know, get to camp. And um, I was in charge of, or I, I was just, you know, a seventh grade boy at a rummage sale, very unhelpful. Um, but my youth pastor took me to the side and was like, Hey, Michael, I need you. I need you to take money. Um, and he like spent time with me and he showed me like, you know, if someone gives you a 20, keep it out because then if you put it in, they're going to say, well, I gave you a hundred dollar bill and you got to, you know, like he told me how to avoid being scammed. And um, I don't think I did a very good job. Uh, I'm sure we lost money on that. Um, but it was such a meaningful thing to me because it said an adult trusted me. Um, it said that I wasn't as awkward and uncomfortable to everyone like I thought I was, um, that I was valuable, that I was needed. If I wasn't there, we weren't going to be able to get money and we weren't going to be able to go to camp. And I wrote that anecdote in my paperwork for commissioning. And it's just like, if we can create a student ministry where we're giving students stories that impact their whole life up until the point where they're, you know, answering calls into ministry, I mean, what an incredible thing we can do for our church and our community that we're able to just give students a chance to believe in themselves and, and to know that God has gifted them. So 
That's that's student ministry to me in a nutshell. Any other thoughts before Pastor David takes us through a visioning discussion? I'm sure there are some other thoughts. Uh, I'm sure there's some folks on this call that have some some experiences of the youth ministry that was important to them, some of the adults on this call. This is Trisha. I'll just say that youth ministry was super important to me. Growing up, I went to summer camp every summer. Um, ours was on Wednesday night, so I went every Wednesday night. And so um, I share some of that, right? Like we did missions and camp and um, it was it was the nucleus, right? Of like where my friends were and where I spent my time. And I went, to, we went to First Baptist Winter Park. And even though some of my friends didn't go to school with me, right? Like we were still very connected in that youth group. So um, a lot of different youth ministers over the years and I have a lot of fond memories. So I'm a big fan of the youth group and kind of what that experience brings to, to your life when you're in high school and I guess junior high too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Trisha. Yeah, Lily. I guess I can just add some more. I'm the president of Student Ministry Hype Club. Um, <laughs> but um, I know for me, it's student ministry was definitely a way of like finding myself in a way because you come, you walk into sixth grade and you go, I don't know who the heck I am. Like I was a little tiny pipsqueak. I would, you know, like I didn't, and you don't really know who you are. And student ministry is a way that you can connect with people with different backgrounds, like ethnicities, sexual orientations, like so many different people can come into one space and kind of mingle and find their way. And like, like I didn't know that I could lead worship ever. Like that was so daunting, yet here I am every Sunday night. And so I think it's a great way to like foster your own personality and people can really figure out who they are and figure out their own identity and whether it be in student ministry themselves or they grow out of it like it's just a way that people can grow and have character development it's awesome i would just add that um i wish when i was growing up i had a student ministry experience like what all of you are describing um i did not and to this day it affects me in ways, mm -hmm. and in a lot of ways, it pushed me away from the church that I grew up in mm -hmm. and started my pull mm -hmm. apart from, from that church. And so had it been different, who knows? Um, but I would have loved to have had a faith ministry that was as open and accepting and uh, of everyone that was there. Mm -hmm. um, so flip side. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, are we ready to move on, Michael? Is that is it yeah? Time? Okay. Yep. So thank you, Michael. And I'd go to the next slide, uh, Ben, if you would. Um, um, did you want to speak to that? Sure. Yeah, I, I could do that. Yeah. So um, student ministry objectives for me, um, we've talked a little bit about this already, um, but um, excuse me, let me get to my, uh, yeah, those are my notes. Um, so student ministry to me is about having fun that has a purpose. Um, there, there are lots of uh, student ministries that focus solely on fun. Um, and those are great. Those are awesome things that you can do. And then there's other student ministries that focus only on the purpose and they help students come out of high school with like, you know, a degree in apologetics. We want to find a middle ground there where like faith can be taken seriously and work through in a meaningful way. Um, but also we can like throw 50 pounds of um, paint powder, like from a color run at each other in someone's front yard. Um, because those are the things, those are the sticky memories um, that'll stay with you all throughout your life. Um, and then, uh, I'm sure you've heard Pastor David talk about this before, but a portable and durable faith. So a faith that they don't graduate from in high school. Um, the statistic is probably outdated, but 
80% of students that are only involved in student ministry will graduate from their faith when they graduate from high school. It makes sense, doesn't it? They go off to college and they go to Asbury Methodist down the street from, you know, uh, um, Ohio State. And they look around and everyone's older than them or older than their parents. And they're like, oh, well, this isn't for me. I need to find the youth group. And then they don't find the youth group. And instead they go to brunch. And that is how we're losing my generation and how we will lose Generation Z if we do not help create an environment where a portable and durable faith uh, can be fostered and created. Something that I love about the United Methodist Church, something that sets us apart, something that makes us, I believe, a really important part of uh, the gospel is this, we have a safe space for questioning. Uh, one of my most favorite things about confirmation is stump the pastor a place where uh, you know, these sixth graders can come up with some of the most creative and difficult theological questions. Um, that honestly, when I walked into my Board of Ordained Ministry interview, I was like, y'all got nothing on an angry sixth grader that wants to know why God, you know, uh, if, if everything happens for a reason, why is my dog dead? You know, like that's, that's the kind of stuff that we wrestle with. And uh, we don't give answers right or wrong answers, but instead give the place for asking right and wrong questions and then working those things out. So that's so important. Um, and then just, you know, basic personal faith formation. We want students to be able to enter in sixth grade with a faith that was promised to them in their baptism. And by graduation in 12th grade, they have a faith that is uniquely their own. Of course, rooted in God's word, of course, rooted in the traditions and uh, uh, of, of our church, but also the reason and experience that they've been able to gain uh, through their maturation within the church. Um, so it's a personal faith for formation, one that is their own. And then lastly, and this, you know, uh, Laura spoke about this, but whole family support. Uh, we know that in at the best case scenario, we're going to see a student two or three hours a week uh, and their parents or their guardians are going to see them for a lot more hours every single week. Um, and so how can we be supporting parents? How can we be a resource for them? Um, that, that's, those are the top five objectives uh, for student ministry um, from, from where we've always tried to do ministry uh, with, with Elevate. So um, Ben, if you'd go to the next slide, Pastor David, I think this is, this is the portion that I wanted you to lead. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Um... Yeah, thanks. So uh, again, a reminder, I think everybody on the screen has been another, or most of you have been to another vision meeting. And again, the, uh, the object is to talk about the outcome. Um, we will follow up and invite you into conversation about how we do the activities to get there. I think Michael just talked about, for example, um, you know, fun that, as, that it's not just fun, it's not just serious, but it's kind of the fun that leads to faith. And so the, the paint or is the activity that helps bring some of the fun outcome. So, you know, just a, a sense of, again, um, digging into some of the, the things that we want as a result. And then we can go back and talk about how we do that, what those programs look like, and then what resources we need. So ne next slide, if you would spend all the way through this one here, please. Yeah. So in fact, um, so I've, I've kind of spread out my screen on my own computer so I can see everybody's face. Um, would love to have a kind of a deep dive of conversation. Um, youth ministry, I did youth ministry for about seven years before I became a pastor at a leading a church, a youth pastor. Um, and it's such an exciting ministry. It, it's, it's such an exciting ministry for the reasons that, that you've heard these wonderful youth leaders speak about today. Um, young adults like Autumn speak about and, and then testimonies about what youth ministry did in people's lives. It's, it's so transformative and I love, I loved as a leader being able to be a part of that transformation and knowing that you were laying the foundation that, that meant a lot for, for folks down the road. Um, so it's such a powerful ministry, such an important ministry. It's also a really challenging ministry. Um, and I think in this season, especially, I think the pandemic has really challenged uh, in search of a number of ways, but particularly youth ministry, uh, because youth ministry is so highly relational um, that not having some of that available, you know, I'm, I think the younger generation is a little more used to Zoom, but not having some of that time to just hang out together has been really difficult. 
And and then on top of it, I think it's a it's a difficult age in terms of uh, year. Um, in that I think there's so many opportunities and so many uh, demands on young people today that I really wrestle with what is youth ministry going to look like and what does it mean and how do we pull out of this pandemic? And so I, I just find that this conversation is a critical one. You know, as we move forward and we talk about uh, vitality in our youth ministry, uh, Michael's named a few and you've named a few, but what are some of the things that your heart yearns for? And that, I guess that's, you know, outside of the outcome group, but what, what's on your heart for what you really yearn for, for yourself or for your youth um, as we move forward? You know, not so much an individual program, but what, so I just, just want to open the table. I'm going to, I'll just wait up, you know, what are we, what are we looking for? Well, I'll say quickly that um, I know when I was in youth group, the last person I wanted to listen to was my mom. And now I am a mom and I can tell you the last person my kids want to listen to is me. So uh, it might just be me and my family, but I think that's a thing. And uh, I having a trusted adult that I could talk to about the wretchedness of the time between sixth grade and 12th grade um, meant everything. I think that that's, those kind of connections aren't limited as much by the pandemic, which is sort of a wonderful blessing. I think there's ways that you can still really safely connect and reach out and be in community with kids going through the same thing. And then also people who have been through it, like the Autumns who are like, girl, I just did it. I'm on the other side. It's going to be okay. Boys are dumb. Uh, that's, I mean, that's, you can't beat that at all. So I think that's one of the blessings and something that we have to, you know, continue to foster. And I think that we do that well, but just having adult volunteers and adult ministry partners that really connect with the kids. Yeah, I think it's hard to have a, a vibrant youth ministry without it. I mean, you, you have to have solid youth leaders, but you also have solid adult leaders. And, and if you don't, then, then all you're really doing is limiting the youth group to whoever connects with the main leader. And so in terms of having a broader voice, um, it's an absolute necessity. Lily, I see your hand up. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I do school on here. I'm used to raising my hand for stuff. <laughs> um, I know just when I think about the church, it's not like a, I saw somebody say this, it's not like a museum of, of perfect people, right? It's a group of broken humans who are all different and we all have mistakes. And I think the outcome that I want for the for student ministry, at least for ours, is a community where we can kind of struggle together. Because mm -hmm. like, even throughout the pandemic, it's so hard. But like out of the pandemic, it'll be a lot easier to like kind of come in as a community and build on each other's strengths. And I think that's something that I seek for the student ministry in the future is like community building, which will work with like quality. Um, like I think Laura was saying before, like quality leaders and quality students really kind of working together to like create those relationships. But yeah, I think community is a super big one because it's super scary coming into a church and being like, what is this, you know? So, yeah. So, so part of it for you, Lily, is, is going to be, and I love your vision, so part is really going to be about how we we set up those relationships in that environment to, to get that sense of connectedness. Am I hearing you right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ben, you were going to say something? I thought I saw you. No. Okay. Who else? What else would you really want to see happen? with the youth ministry. So this is Trisha. One of the things I would say is sort of evolving as the kids go from um, middle school to high school. I think that they, um, they're in different places in terms of the things that are going on with them. And um, even just from a 
like school workload and what they have time for and kind of how that manifests itself. And so finding that connection to keep them, you know, interested and connected kind of all the way through that, I think would be important to me. Yeah. Having a way, so flesh that out a little bit more. I, I lost some of the train between like ways they're connected and specific specifically to what their their stage in the journey is. Is that what you're saying? Are you just saying overall? Or? To what their stage and what their age is, right? I think um, what's fun to them in sixth grade is not fun to them in Absolutely. 11th grade. No. And I think what they're doing in school is different, right? So um, for instance, you may have fewer people come on Sunday night because in high school because that ends up being like a big homework night, right? right. Because they have a lot of stuff that's due the next day. So how do you you know, accommodate for that? And do the connect groups need to look different maybe because they can drive or they can be other places. So kind of meeting them for the maturity level that they're at and kind of growing them through that, right? Versus, you know, like in sixth grade, right? Your parents are dropping you off. You're super into games. Like you view things in a different lens. And I think yeah, when you're a senior, you're like, yeah, like I have homework or what, you know, whatever. So, um, and that's not just referencing my child, but I've actually seen no. that with others um, that have gone before me, right? Like they were like, oh yeah, like he's not here tonight because he has too much homework. So um, we can't fix the homework piece, but maybe there's other ways or other times or things that are more tailored for kind of the age and where they are in that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, and I think there are a number of ways that go about doing groups. You can do them in different ways. I know the group I grew up in, our our small group was our basis. It met during the week and we only got together as a large group like every couple of weeks. You know, that was there are different models that went through that because I got older. And I and what I was gonna say earlier, dovetails with yours, Trisha, is you know, in terms of developmentally, in terms of faith. So back, you know, that durable and portable faith is really important to me. And I want that for my kids to have that faith. And part of that is, you know, when you're in elementary school and even early on in middle school, you're kind of pouring the stuff in. You're just pouring the material in. And as they get closer to the end of high school and get closer to college, then they start to unpack that. You know, they start to say, okay, well, what does this really mean? You know, and you don't want to do that as much in sixth grade as you want to do it in 12th grade you know, just develop me faith-wise. I don't want my sixth grader going like, I don't really know if I believe the, you know, the, the, you know, that's not what I want for my sixth grader, but my 12th grader, what I don't want them to do is go to college and, and all of a sudden be hit with questions that they never considered. And all of a sudden their faith is now like off to the side because it's not relevant because they've never had a place where they could safely say, no, I don't know if I believe this or what does that mean if I don't, you know, what, how do I believe this? What does this apply? And and some of those pieces. And so absolutely, I think just not only in terms of fun and schedule, but even in terms of what the task is for that durable and portable faith, it has to look different for the 12th grader than it does for the sixth grader. I don't know if that makes sense. I agree with that. Yeah, I was going to say that I was trying to think of a way to say basically exactly what you just said, David, because we've got a while before Antonina's in college, but I mean, next year she's going to be in ninth grade. Right. That is something that I think about is, you know, in four years, she's going to be gone and I would like her to have that faith. And because that is something that happened to me, like Michael said, I went to college and, you know, it was like, I, this, you know, these are all really old people in Clemson, South Carolina and, <laughs> and it, you know, so then we started hanging out doing brunch and it took me a while to come back. So, and I don't want that for my children. So, yeah. yeah so something that really prepares uh, students for kind of that entry into a different world that connects relationships. And it seems to me that that would have to be you know, connection beyond just students is connection to adults too. I mean, you know, like I, I grew up in a church that was very connected across different, I had six or seven different spiritual parents of different families that I could talk to. So some of it was, was having some comfort level to speak to other and see people that weren't just my age in that. But I, I definitely resonate with, wow, you know, how do we best prepare students for entry into the, into the next step? So.
What else? David, I, I, I think um, to go back to what we talked about and the, you know, what student ministry means to us and you know, what it meant to us, uh, you know, I think um, just increasing, just developing that sense of belonging to the church family as a whole. Uh, to me, that's really important um, is that, you know, the, um, the, that our students recognize that people across the spectrum of ages in our church uh, value them and that, uh, that we are so blessed by uh, their presence in our church family. I think another objective is to help students see that um, that their input is, like Ben said, is adds to the value of the church and is is wanted, but also is needed. Um, I think of like an object lesson that we had um, at the South Street campus. There was this door that wouldn't close. The the um, Autumn and Lily probably remember this, but like the the self closing thing broke decades ago um and and so kids would walk out the door and the door would swing wide open and then everyone would yell door and the object lesson was if you don't do it it's not going to happen if you walk out the door and you don't close it behind you then then it's not going to be closed and so the object lesson there is you know like through bodybuilders if you don't come to church and lead children children are not going to learn the dances that meant something to you and so um as as one of the objectives or outputs has to be like, how can we expand that? How can we help students see people suffering in different um, uh, in in different countries? How can we see that as as their responsibility? You know, how can they see the whole world as their parish, as Wesley said? And so um, that to me is is another output that that we want to see. One that I'd add is just the, having done youth ministry, the importance of parents that buy in and and understand that too, because of Patricia's point, you know, for the first four years of youth ministry, the students can't drive themselves to youth ministry. They have to, you know, they have to have parents that buy into having this being important. And I know, I, you know, my confession is as a pastor, you know, Sunday night became really precious because it was one of the few times our family could actually be together and uh, wasn't working. And so, you know, it was a real internal debate about, okay, what's better that we go to dinner tonight or they go to the youth group. And so um, I, I don't know the answer, but I feel like part of the value is that there is, there is not just the church's embrace that this is needed and necessary and help it, but the family's embrace that there is, this is necessary and we're partnering together to do this. And starting early on, I definitely am a firm believer you build solid groups from the bottom. And, um, you know, starting early on before the onslaught of choices becomes even greater. Um, uh, so I, I don't know how to put that in better words, but that's certainly one of the things that that there's a better, a deeper sense of partnership. Anyone else? I am really interested to see how we're going to get there. So I am, <laughs> I am really interested to see how that works. So, I mean, I'm hopeful off of tonight's conversation with Lily and Autumn and, you know, Emily and, and folks, that's, that's a wonderful thing to see. Um, there's some work to do and to, to accomplish some of the things we're talking about is more of a movement than it is a, a mousetrap. And so, you know, how we begin that movement and build on the leaders that are there is something that um, is not going to be easy, but certainly incredibly important. So any last comments before we move on from this section? I, 
I'd love to hear your thoughts. I really would. Okay, is there the next slide? Uh, this is just a, this is a question we've been asking, which is, you know, we see an immediate need and I, I would like to hear more about at some point what it would take to have safety to open up some, you know, some of these, these in-person things we're talking about. I know that it's critical. Uh, you know, what does that look like? I don't think this is necessarily the place for it, but I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what parents would feel, would feel safe, but uh, this slide is really about what what's ahead in the future in three years as opposed to three months from now. What 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 value might change in three years as opposed to three months from now? And obviously, we don't always see ahead, but um, you know, one thing that that really be, that as a parent of teenagers and as a pastor and dealing with my own you know, work is helping students as our, our leaders, students are both future, but even now present leaders, to have uh, the ability to live in a very pluralistic, divided, polarized world, even more polarized than before, and, and to lead our, our world and our culture, our community into like folding the ends together. I, I you know, I, I've sat through a lot of dinner table conversations with my kids who come out of high school and they are just fired up, you know, throwing flames about this, that, or the other issue. And they get, they get, and that's great because I appreciate the passion and they get, they get exposure to things I never was exposed to in high school. How do we help people? How do, how do they help us live into a more sense of Christian community and, and how do we equip them to do that? That's an example of a value that probably is even more relevant to me now than it was three years ago. And, you know, what's, what's a value ahead that we want to make sure we hit? Maybe I'm not making sense. Uh, David, I think that uh, from my perspective, it's meeting people where they are and um, engaging with uh, our students um from the standpoint of you know where are you what are your challenges what are your what what's what's what do you find you know um is making life uh, or your interactions or your friendships or your relationships with others uh challenging Yeah, and I, th I, th I think it's, it's, you know, in that question is, you know, here's how we do faith. And faith isn't a program. Faith isn't, you know, it's not just something that I, I sample with, but faith is a way of life living out those difficult relationships. And the sooner we help, you know, them develop that, the more powerful they'll be as they grow. Yeah, church, church can be a place where we learn to disagree well. You know, not not take in opinions that we know are not biblical, that we know are not what God wants uh, for us or our community. But how how can we live into that tension of disagreeing uh, with people um, while also holding grace and an opportunity um, for others to be heard? Um, I think that the the church could be um, a, a great proving ground for that ability, especially amongst students. Oh, we have a question. Uh, does student ministry cover college age students also, or is that under a different area? That that up to now has been a different area. Um, but what's happened over the last couple of years is the college age ministry has kind of grown into the young adult ministry as the as the, the people have aged. And so I think there is need to uh, look at branching into that and covering that. But most of that's not something that is currently being done. Is that a fair answer, Michael? Yeah, I would say that uh, we do college age ministry, but almost by accident. Um, it's a thing where when our alumni come back into town, 
um, we'll start up um, Bible studies. We'll start up, um, you know, when quarantine first started, we started two different Bible studies for college age students uh, in quarantine. And then we also uh, empower leaders like Autumn and, and other college age students to, um, to serve in leadership. But um, a college ministry specific uh, to college students, that, yeah, I think that's definitely a fair answer that it's not there just yet, but it's definitely an opportunity for us to grow. I think, you know, from my perspective, Melissa, from to do college ministry, you have to really be committed as a church family that it is a ministry, that you're investing in leaders that you won't see the return on uh, because it's such a, they're in such a transient time of their life where they're moving into their first job, they're moving into the next place they're going to live. And so it's really out of the love of your heart, you're going to invest in people that are going to transform community, but it, it may not be in your community and that's okay. And so that, that takes a church to have a bit of resolve that they really want to do it. I see Autumn shaking her head. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go that I'm not too far off base. So that's <laughs> all right. Next slide, please. Is that you, Ben? That's me. So our next steps are to identify a small team of to start meeting regularly to bring the future of student ministry to life. All of those, uh, all of you who are on this uh, meeting tonight will receive an email following up after our session, inviting you to join in uh, with this group. And then a newly developed student ministry leadership team We'll work together to create and implement the plan uh, from this group. Before I turn it over to David to say a prayer, uh, does anyone else have anything on their mind they want to share with us tonight or anything uh, sort of wrap up um, your thoughts about uh, student ministry or um, just uh, any last words? I don't know if I can put Arnetta on the spot, Arnetta. You're one of our board members. Do you have anything on your heart? I find you'd be a wise person. Is there anything from your perspective about youth ministry that you would share with us? No, I, I think I would join in what Erin had to say about student ministries. That that was not my experience or my my children's experience. I wish that I wish they had had the benefit of um an experience that, that is offered in our church for, for young people. I think, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for uh, young people. I, I will just share though, like personally, uh, as a black person, I was um, the only, only black person in my youth group in, at uh, church. And so uh, in terms of, uh, you know, there was, a, for me, there was always a feeling of not quite fitting in. Mm. So I think um, that's something to be aware of if we have people who are different than most of the people in our groups, how can we help them feel that they fit in and that they belong? That's powerful. Thank you, Arnetta. I really appreciate that reminder. Thank you. Thank you, Arnetta. And, uh, I'm going to ask David if he closes out in prayer tonight. God, I thank you for this time, and I thank you for those who have given their time to be here tonight and to think and share for a bit. I thank you for our adult leaders and our youth leaders who are in the middle of doing ministry and building a community of Christ. And I just pray that you would speak to us as we get off the call and we get into this week that we would not forget, but would be thinking about ways that we can reach out and in a very powerful way, help to guide and to build and to, uh, to encourage um, the youth in our community that, that they may grow in their awareness of your love, that they may develop that durable and portable faith, that they may come to that sense of community and belonging where they can shape who they are. Show us, show us how to do that and, and provide for us uh, the passion and energy and the resources. And we, we thank you for just the, the amazing opportunity you've set before us. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Thank Dave. you everyone for being here. Yeah, thank, thank you everyone. You.